Good afternoon and welcome back to Paddock Pass Live, powered by Repco. Wow, Andy Jones, what a day. That was action-packed. There was action aplenty for race 13 of the Supercars Championship. There certainly was, wasn't there? And not only in that race, but all the lead-up today has provided so much action. We've seen the likes of guys like Jamie Winkup, James Courtney, very well-credentialed guys, making a few mistakes and tagging some walls around this place in the lead-up. It just shows the intensity of where these guys are all operating at. But that racing for me there's been so much chat about hard tyres soft tyres is it the right mix to be able to put them together and let people do what they want I'm a fan I'm voting yes racing today was terrific well there is an election on this weekend in Darwin but it's a different kind of election uh Awesome to see Anton Di Pasquale score his very first victory in supercars. Unfortunately, Betty Clemenko is not here, but she has been on a camera, on a computer screen, watching in the garage this whole day. Yeah, and she's an integral part of Penrod Erebus Racing. Clearly, we've seen lots of documentary last year following this team. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and that's a, a massive, massive effort for, uh, for Betty to be able to put this group together with all the right ingredients and be able to provide Anton with his first race win. Now, we thought we'd come through here, Ree, and uh, I had Anton teed up, but you can, um, you can go have a chat with Dave. And just check out the size of that trophy. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. Dave Reynolds, don't run away from me. Come over here. We want to have a chat to you. Firstly, I want to say congratulations to you and your partner, Tahan. A baby is coming. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, very, very excited. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. You're speechless. Yeah, I'm speechless. She's been wanting it for probably five years, and it became a daily conversation in our house. So. Eventually, I was going to give in, wasn't I? Now, we'll, yes, we won't talk... It's your turn now. <laughs> Don't talk about that now. We won't talk oh, about well, racing Dave, just I yet. I want to know about your camping trip. I heard that you've been camping with my, with my mate over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, we went camping for a couple of days and looked at the stars and saw the biggest shooting star of my life, talking UFOs and aliens and all this weird stuff. And, um, yeah, I had the greatest, like, two days ever. It was magnificent. It's been awesome that the teams, uh, they've been here for a bit longer than what they expected, but you've been able to enjoy what Darwin has to offer. Yeah, Darwin's one of the best places you could ever come. Like, every time you step off the plane, you just got a smile from ear to ear. It's just nice weather, nice people, always heaps of activities to do. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's the best place you come to in Australia. Sum up your day in three words. Um, uh, average car performance, I don't know. That's Just, yeah. just lacking speed? Yeah, lacking a bit of lacking a bit of everything really. Just didn't have the most. Didn't oh, my car wasn't that good over any at any part of the day today. Oh, except in qualifying, it wasn't that bad. But I stuffed up. But yeah, just need to um, got a few changes we've got to try and do. And um, I'm really happy to see Anton like have his first race win. It's awesome. Like I couldn't be couldn't be happy. I feel like a proud dad. <laughs> you are very much a proud dad. I think Andy's got Anton over there. I certainly do. Anton, Rihanna just posed the question to Dave and said to him, just sum up your day. I'll fire the same question to you. Sum up your day, mate. Uh, yeah, not bad. Um, what do you mean, not bad? <laughs> it, it was OK. Obviously, we threw all our eggs in today's basket and we got chocolates for it. So, uh, obviously, tomorrow it's, it's will be hard. We're not going to get results like that tomorrow, but um, that's OK. We'll leave that to car nine, so the pressure's on him tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, we... I was, I was really happy with my car. We had a good race, a um, few good battles, you know, a lot threw at us, bars down pit lane, safety cars and all this stuff, and we still came out with results, so it's, it's all good. Mate, I'm going to follow your lead here. You've certainly got the chocolates. Now there's some good chocolates out there and there's some not-so-good chocolates. I, I don't understand why I'm reading your body language. You don't look too happy with your performance. You've chalked up your first Virgin Australia Supercars win. It's a very, very difficult task. doesn't matter the circumstances. Why so deflated looking? Oh, it's pretty hot, mate. No, um, no, we're very happy. Obviously, that's what we wanted, but uh, we, we want to try and do this more often and carry it on and carry it on. You know, it's only early days, and uh, we, we obviously know we had a tyre advantage on most of the field today, so we had to get a result. We were really not happy, so uh, we're happy, but obviously we want to do it more often and uh, back it up. There's a, you know, once is not enough. We appreciate your time. I hope you find some joy on the way to the press conference, mate. We'll let him go. He's got a few more engagements. But for me, look, he's, he's hot, he's tired. It shows just how difficult this event is, whether you're running on the Dunlop soft tyre or the Dunlop hard tyre. It's energy sapping up here. And particularly we're four weeks later into the year at this event than we normally are. The humidity feels quite a lot stickier. And Re, next week it's going to be a whole heap worse, isn't it? It is warm. We love coming up here during winter because it is so warm. But as you said, it is a lot more humid than what we're used to um, seeing here in Darwin. And also, I just think that 
you know, they've had four weeks off, they sort of come here. It sort of seemed like everyone was a bit more intense than what we normally see. It certainly felt like it early on in that race, didn't it? And it, even some of the, the weirdness that was going on around the safety car restarts, it's not something that we've seen a lot. It was almost like all the drivers over the last week have wound themselves up like a rubber band and then just let the thing go and there's all this sort of craziness and you can't control it. Before we leave here, uh, Ree, big shout out to James Courtney. A lot of talk about him. I know it's unfortunate that Will was bumped out of this seat, but to see James jump in and come along with Boost Mobile, grab a podium was terrific. Likewise for Scotty Pye, I saw Charlie Schwerkolt from Team 18 on my way back down to, uh, to do Paddock Pass Live and I had a quick chat with Charlie. He was very emotional. He was a, a, a big player when it came to James and the DJR uh, championship that he was able to wrap up. But you could just see this was a podium that was managed on his own with his own team. And, and I feel like there's a bit more strength coming from that little group up there. They've certainly been talking about it over the last couple of weeks. Charlie has been vocal in the media saying how much Scott has been adding to that team and pushing them both together. And, and we saw how strong Mark Winterbottom was here today as well. And his results recently have been really strong. So I think that we've got more to see from Charlie Schwerkot Racing. I want to talk about an analogy that you brought up this morning. Tyres and spending your lunch money. These guys here, Anton Di Pasquale, as we heard him say, James Courtney put two soft tyres on in his uh, pit stop. They've, they've saved, you said they had $50 in the morning and they've spent most of it at lunch, so that, at breakfast, so they don't have much for dinner. So tomorrow's going to be a tough day. Correct. And that, that, that was the way I sort of looked at it when we were talking about tyre strategy and putting it into to, to layman's terms, and particularly people like me who struggle when I don't eat. Uh, I looked at it and I went, the tyre strategy is very, very simple. Somebody's given them $50. They've got to buy three meals in the day. You can either, you know, spend a little bit at each and you'll be happy throughout the day. Or if you want to, you go and spend your whole $50 and you get yourself the most epic breakfast. But I tell you, by the time you get through lunch and dinner, there's going to be a whole heap of pain, and, and that's what these guys have got to do tomorrow. You know, they're going to get through some pain, and uh, by the time we go and see Anton, given that he looked a bit disappointed today when he had a win, imagine what it's going to be like tomorrow when he hasn't eaten for two meals. Andy, let's walk up this way, and um, unfortunately, I hope you haven't spent all your per diem so far this weekend, because we want to eat tomorrow as well. But that's what makes these uh, formats so exciting, so different, so new. We've seen new people on the podium, new uh, race winners as well. It's the second time this year that we've seen a brand new race winner. So it's certainly mixing up the field. For, oh, and, that, and that's what our sport is about. We, you know, we, we are competitors. Everybody up and down this pit lane is a competitor, whether you are driving the cars or, or you're working in the paddock. Um, you know, we, we competitors, re really. We all work together, but the sport is a competition sport. We want to see really healthy competition, but we want to be entertained along the way. And for me, I watched SP from home and I was thoroughly entertained. And I watched it here today from the circuit and covered it and helped, tried to cover it, and I was massively entertained. And when you're a purist and you're feeling that again, I think we're on the right mix of, of where we're at with our sport. On the other end of the scale, disappointing day for this team behind us, Brad Jones Racing. Uh, really, for those three cars, Nick Perkett, Todd Hazelwood, Macaulay Jones, it's been a really tough one. It certainly has. I went into the into the transporter before we came on for uh, Paddock Pass Live, powered by Repco, and I just went and had a quick chat with my, my little buddy, Jack Smith, and just said, well done. You know, they rolled the dice, they put some soft tyres on that car, and there was one clearly happy face in that A-trailer, and there was three very, very sad faces, and I didn't even come across Brad, so I'd imagine his face is not all that happy. And the short of it is in this game, you know, it's expensive and when you see cars being torn up like this and you see three out of four from the one group, you know, it's an expensive day. But Brad wears his heart on his sleeve. He's a good operator. He's a good leader and uh, they'll come back tomorrow. And they were, I heard a quick conversation in the A trailer about the best thing about today is that the sun will come up tomorrow. So, you know, they're in good spirits. Yeah, that's certainly a good way to put it. As you can see, Nick Perkett's car behind us, that sustained damage very early on in the race. Obviously, Todd Hazelwood was a bit of an unfortunate bystander and was caught up in that incident. And then we saw the issue with Macaulay Jones. So the bit of work to be done uh, for the team overnight and they'll be up and about tomorrow. They certainly will be. And quizzed Macaulay really quickly because we saw some footage of him on the run through turn four. He turned the car in. It looked like he had a real lot of understeer in the car, whether or not he got into the corner a little bit too quickly or not. But when you have understeer and that amount of lock in the car and you drop a wheel off onto the concrete edge, he said that it really spat him hard into the outside fence and we saw how much damage it is. Have we got 
Bit of time here, Ree, to have a chat with Rick. We'll just quickly uh, interrupt Rick as he's just sort of gazing at his car lovingly there. Rick, can you give us a bit of a summary of, of how your day went today? Horrendously is a quick summary. I'm now turning into the sticker guy, so I'm just inspecting the work that I've got to do tonight to get it back into tip-top condition for tomorrow, yeah. was an idea we got, obviously, um, a tough poly there. Um, we didn't have any practice hard, so the first time we ran on the hard compound was in the, in the quality session and got tangled up with LeBrock, didn't get much space from him there and ran us into the grass and then got done for a dangerous re-entry. So, yeah, it's a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a crappy day. To lighten your spirits and lighten you up a little bit, tell me about the best thing that you've uh, seen on your trip from Gold Coast or Olmo to, to the Darwin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. I mean, it's a tough situation for everyone. We'd, everyone would love to be able to go home in between races, but to see um, some of the country has been really good. Um, Kakadu is definitely probably one of the highlights. That And there's this pl place called Cape Hillsborough, and there's a little caravan park right on the beach. It's a pretty nice area. So won't have much time for sightseeing over the next month or so, but um, so far it's been pretty good. Who caught the bigger fish, yourself or your son Lex at the Barramundi farm? Uh, Lex caught, like, nine, and I caught <laughs> one, so it wasn't too good, was it? So uh, he's... He might be a fisherman, I think. So don't give up your day job then. Exactly. <laughs> I was That's out there it. for that little moment that we did with Rick and, um, and and Lex certainly had him covered. I'm disappointed to hear that that wasn't one of his highlights, though, <laughs> coming Barramundi fishing. Do you know why? Because Lex caught 15 and he only got the one. And what did I say about competitive group? He hated being smoked, but Lex loved it. And, and how old is Lex? Uh, he's five, turning six. <laughs> The turning six is the important bit. Should we go for a little wander in here and have a chat with the guys at Team 18? I mentioned earlier that Charlie Schwerkolt uh, wears his heart on his sleeve. Let's go in and just dive bomb these guys here. What are you munching away on there, Mark Winterbottom? We'll start with Scott Pye. Firstly, congratulations. Podium result. I know what it's like in this group when you get the first one out for everybody. Pretty awesome feeling. It is, yeah. And... What nailed the timing of that? We'll retire, and that's all we will hear, I tell you. But, um, yeah, and for Reese, my number one, his first, uh, first ever podium. So, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. The racing's awesome fun. That was, that was really good. And, and Phil here, I mean, the car was really quick, and he backed me. I mean, we were, I think, dead last in the lead lap. So, I mean, even I was doubt, doubting the call to go to softs. And really, if you don't get a, a podium, you feel like you've wasted them. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, the car boys, was good. Boys, boys, had, boys had to go in the garage and find the softs before they could fit them. That was half the problem. So, no, no, it was a good team effort there. Great. No. And for CP4 as well, so great for the team. Unfortunately for him, obviously, it was just, you know, the hard tie at the end, couldn't quite hang on. But, um, yeah, great, great result for the team. I was going to quickly quiz you on that. Bittersweet, really, wasn't it, when you made the move on Frosty and you demoted him from that podium position? Was there ever a moment where you thought, mm, maybe not? Well, number one thing is that we get this team a podium as soon as possible. So we were we had the luxury of either way it was going to be one of us. Um, and yeah, and Frosty made it really easy. Obviously, obviously he pulled over and let me pass, but um, yeah. It's just great to get a bunch of a podium. There'll be plenty more in the future. Absolutely. Good to chat. We'll go to Ree. Uh, Frosty, you're already in the Darwin casual attire. Pretty hot day out there. This is Darwin formal. I'm, um, I'm dressed to go out tonight, but um, yeah, it's tough. It's a tough race. It's shorter, obviously, than, than normal. We only did, what, 30, I think, four laps or something. Um, but it was a physical race. There's plenty going on, you know. There's four wide at one stage on restarts, and that's when you forget to breathe because there's all you know, that stuff going on. But, um, yeah, it was a good result. Two cars, third and fourth is as good as it gets, probably, uh, for the race. But oh, it's just those safety cars, so gutted, you know, just that um, it come out not just once but twice, but um, yeah, good result. I'll let you keep eating your almonds there, Andy. It's been a pretty epic day, the first day here in Darwin and it's been action-packed right from the beginning. It certainly has. We haven't got enough time to ch talk to Charlie, but I can guarantee my conversation, he's, he's a very happy <laughs> guy to this afternoon. Yeah, thanks Andy. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow and that's all from us here in Darwin. We'll be back nice and early tomorrow from the pit lane.